Hello, welcome to this Google Search Console API with Python tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to extract all your Google Search Console data into CSV files using the GSC API and Python. If you want to get the code I used for this video, head over to jcschwinar.com. The reason I'm using the Google Search Console API is that the GSC user interface is quite limited for advanced reporting. It shows only a thousand rows at the time and you can't extract keywords per page at scale. In Google Search Console, you can look at the page and check for the keywords that for that specific page, but checking each page manually is a painful process and provides limited insight. To be able to access the API, you will need to do a few things. First, you need to get a client secret key and store it in a JSON file. If you don't know how, don't worry. Just check my tutorial on how to get the Google Search Console API keys. I will add the link in the description below. Second, you need to define the website and the dates that you want to extract and give the CSV an output name. Let's run this. Next, I will need to import the OAuth module that I created to authorize my credentials and store them in a webmaster service variable. Now, the first time you run this, a pop-up will open asking you to log in into your Gmail account and authorize the credentials. Then it will save those authorized credentials so you don't have to log in each time. Now run the function. Now the first function that we're going to look at is how to extract the GSC information from a list of URLs. This is going to be useful if you decide to crawl your website and get a list of thousands of URLs that you want to know if they're getting traffic or not. Let's take those two URLs for example. Here I use a list comprehension to append the domain to the URI and then provide the arguments necessary to run the GSC by URL function. Let's run it and see what we can get. The result is a simple data frame with the clicks and the impressions for those pages. It is very simple, but expand that to tens of thousands of pages and the data can be massively useful to prioritize which URLs have actual value. The second function is to extract data by filtering specific elements. For example, I want to extract only the queries that contains Python. Again, providing the arguments of the function containing the credentials, filters, and the dates, I can now run GSC with filters. The result is a data frame that contains all pages that ranked for the queries that contains the word Python. By default, this function will return a thousand rows, but you can add the argument row limit to define up to 25,000 rows. If we set the row limit to be over 25,000, we will get an HTTP error. That's because we tried to add a limit that is over what the GSC API allows us to make in a single request. To extract more than 25,000 rows, we need to create loops using a combination of start row and row limit arguments in order to make multiple HTTP requests of 25,000 rows. Let's look at how to do that. This next function is one of my favorite. With this one, we will extract 100% of all the data from Google Search Console. What the script does is that it creates an output folder with the names of your website and saves your GSC data into CSVs aggregated by months. If some CSVs already exist from previous extraction, it will check the dates in those CSVs to make sure that existing dates are not extracted again. The dates that have not been extracted yet will be processed and appended to the right CSV file. Let's run the GSC to CSV functions to see more detail of how the data is extracted. What it does is that it loops one day at a time. Then for each of those days, it makes the first request to extract the first 25,000 rows of data. It appends those rows to a data frame. Then for that same day, 
it makes another request to get the rows from 25,000 to 50,000 and then from 50,000 to 75,000 until all the rows are extracted for that specific day. Once that day is completed, it writes the data to a new or existing CSV file, depending on the situation. Once this is done, it moves to the next day and repeats the process. That process allows us not to lose any progress made and never to extract the same date twice. Here, since my website is small, it won't need to get data by batch since I only have around 4000 rows to extract per day. But you can still see how it works. Note that the end date argument is optional. By default, this function will ex extract up to three days in the past, as this is the limit of data that is reported in Google Search Console. Right now, let's leave the end date empty to see what happens. The GSC to CSV function checks the date in the CSVs and tells you when a date was already extracted, printing existing date. When it discovers a new date, it processes it and appends the new date to the ex existing CSV. Note that this has also created a new CSV file for the month that was never processed. Now let's look at another optional argument, the gzip argument. The gzip argument lets you save the data to a compressed gzip file in order to save some space on your hard drive. This is especially important because with the GSC API you can quickly get a large amount of data even for a relatively small website. If you set the argument to true and run this, you'll re-extract the data, this time to a compressed CSV file. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to stay informed when I create new tutorials.